But right, after that feed, I'm not sure I can even fit under the floor if I wanted to. It's like back where it all started, I guess. Insulating and restoring floors was one of our first video series on the channel and bizarrely one of our most popular. Um, in that instance we used sheep's wool, we were going pretty eco at the time and trying to use natural products like the lime hemp and, and the sheep's wool and we supported that on netting um, and what we did is went over the top of each joist, down, along, back up. Did that all the way along and then we rolled out our sheep's wool insulation in there and it's worked really well. On top of that, um, on top of the joists then on the warm side, the room side of the insulation, just like any other walls, ceilings, roofs, uh, we put a vapour control layer and in that instance I just used a, a DPM sheet and it quite confrontationally because everyone seems to have an opinion of that on, on the videos. Um, doesn't really matter. Underneath, people say, oh, you shouldn't use netting, you should use a breathable membrane. Well, what's more breathable than a flipping netting? It's one inch square. There's really um, no benefit from using a membrane. That said, I'm going to use a membrane now because I've already got some offcuts. I needed a roll plus netting. It's just a bit of a faff. Um, but what I'm not going to do is go over the top of each joist, down, along, back up, because it's just such a waste of material. Um, I'm just going to go, because I've got space under here, I'm just going to crawl around on my back and nail it to the under, underside. And then what I'll do then is get some scraps of plywood and just nail some strips under there, just in case the staples ever failed. I'm going to put the external, what you'd point up, I'm going to point that down into our ventilated void and work that way. All right. Quite sure how easy this is going to be, to be quite honest. But... Flipping out of staples, aren't I? I haven't really thought this through, am I? How am I going to get out on the last strip? It'd be a lot easier if there were appliances everywhere. But I can't really shift them outside to this step, and washing machines are always heavier than you think. I could probably manage the others, but I'll just shift everything that side, membrane this side, into it. Yeah, it would have been better to move them. I always feel like I'm loading a musket at this point.
that is DIY support team. That woman is an absolute hero. Not that I needed a cheese fondue and a chocolate fondue an hour and a half after having spaghetti carbonara, but Valentine's Day one day early. You just gotta love pregnancy cravings, haven't you? Right after that feed, I'm not sure I can even fit under the floor if I wanted to, but um, what I'm gonna do for this last little section is just do that other method of going up and over. I've got a few obstacles in the way and it just w worth giving that a go. A go. Like I said, it uses up more of the membrane, but it's uh, a lot easier. And if you're working from above and your crawl space is tiny, then this is probably the best way to go. Now we've just got to make sure we don't step in the wrong place and go falling through the floor. But we're now ready for the insulation to sit in, albeit with appliances everywhere we look. It may well be the first time I've actually had properly spaced joists to insulate. Everything in the house is old money, so it's kind of different uh, sizes, nothing really fit. Uh, same with when I insulated the some of the ceilings. Again, it's a case of you're gonna to have to trim everything down yourself. Whereas these are usually perforated at four, 400 sensors. So hopefully that's what we've got here. Interestingly, I was talking to our building regs guy and he's saying that where possible, he and the rest of the team and our local authority are trying to encourage um, mineral, well, more breathable insulations, uh, especially because most of the housing stock in Bath and kind of North Somerset is all pretty old. Um, so in renovation situations, like I've always said, going breathable is a good way. And that's kind of what we got here. Of course, we'll have the vapor control layer on top, but we're not, you know, all, all your timbers are gonna be able to breathe and move. It's half past ten. We're uh, we're there with the insulation. It's got a nice acoustic in here now. It's like a music studio. Um, it it's probably about time for bed, but I think I'm going to crack on and get the the next job done, which is the vapor barrier. Now I've had all sorts of uh, comments on my videos from about five years ago on the positives and negatives of this, but I can assure you I've thought it through. And like any insulation, you know, non-breathable makeup, you've got to have a vapour barrier on the uh, on the warm side. And that's exactly what I'm going to do here. Um, people talked about it using a breathable membrane uh, in, the, uh, in the house when I did that job, but it just doesn't make sense to me. Why would you want warm vapour going down into your insulation, which is cold and potentially condensing, interstitial, condens interstitial condensation, rotting joists and all sorts of nasties. I've got a cellar, so I've been able to go underneath and check 
and the way I've done it, it's been bone dry five years, no issues at all. So that's the exact way I'm going to go now. And like I did the first time around, rather than using a really thin polythene vapour barrier, which is much cheaper, and you can see through it, so you can see the joists, um, I'm just going to use a, a DPM. It's more heavy duty, um, it's pretty much the same size as the room, which helps, and I don't have to have a join. Vapor, ba vapor barrier on a roll is two meter widths. You've got to tape it all, and yeah, it's just, you know, for the sake of I think it's eight quid or something like that. We'll uh, we'll get going. Now, ideally, you want to take it up the wall a little bit, um, or, or tie it into your vapor barrier on the walls. Not sure if we're going to have quite that much, but we should be able to tape it down anyway. And this is where it gets really fun because any minute now we're not going to know where to stand. Good day. Dad's going to come over tomorrow, give me a hand with the floor. So if I can get this done now, that'd be good because it means I can get the subfloor down tomorrow morning, and then we can start building out these stud walls. I know you're all willing me to fall through the floor. I'm sure it'd be good for views. I'm not that shallow. Right, membrane went down. I've moved the appliances for the fourth or fifth time, but it's all in place now. I've used a handful of staples. You don't really need to use that many and you obviously you are going to end up puncturing it with the screws anyway. That again is something that always people mention. But you imagine a screw going through polythene or through plastic like this. It basically self seals uh, as the thread goes through. So and again even with a with a nail or a staple. So I'm not too concerned there. Um, I'm going to get some boards in. It's 11 p.m. or so. But I reckon because we're we're on a high now, let's keep going. Because um, I need, at least need to get these appliances back in working order because I've got to get a load of laundry on before bedtime. Do you know what? Change my mind. I'm knackered. Let's end on a high. The floor's insulated, the plumbing's done, the vapour barrier's down, and then we can get the floorboards done. Dad's going to be here in the morning, it's just going to be safer lifting them through two people and I'm tempted to just run a bit of spray paint on some of the joist areas so we know where they are. To be honest you can almost make them out because I've put footprints on them.